Uh, good afternoon, everybody. If you can see, there's a small change between the text in your programs, which is piracy is good with an exclamation point, to piracy is good with a question mark. And this is to uh, keep everyone calm as we walk into some uncharted territory. So, the 18th of October, 2004, is the day that historians will state, state that television died. Let me explain what happened. On that day, Sky One, which is a UK satellite broadcaster, showed the premiere episode of the new Battlestar Galactica series. And that was show was a co-production between the Sci-Fi Channel in the United States and Sky One. So they're sharing the development costs. Now, Sci-Fi had decided they were going to postpone the premiere of their own version of the series until January of 2005, which is a slow month in American television, so it's easy to make a splash. Okay, all well and good, except there is no such thing as territorial distribution anymore, and of course, as soon as it was broadcast on Sky, the geeks, and let's face it, people watching Sci-Fi Channel in America are going to be geeks, were downloading it after folks in the UK had posted it. Now, there's nothing new there. People have been doing that in various ways for several years. It was the way they were doing it that was different. Because in the last 18 months or so, we've seen the emergence of a new technology which is known as BitTorrent. Now, you've probably heard about BitTorrent. I want to spend a little time today explaining what it is so that I can help you understand why it's changed the economics of distribution so radically. What you see in the center there is a computer. It's just typified by a little box with a little bit of blue in it. Think of it as almost a fluid that's filling up. Those are the bits from a file. And then what you see all around it in that great big wheel are other computers. And each of those computers are, it's almost as if that central box has got a bunch of straws and it's sipping a little bit of the file from each of the straws that are connected to all of the other computers on the internet. Now the reason this protocol is called BitTorrent is because you're only getting a little sip out of each straw, but when you add all of those straws together, you get a mighty flow. So BitTorrent allows you to go a lot of different places in search of the same information. Ask each of these places for a little bit different part of that information. I'll take the beginning part from here, I'll take the middle part from here, I'll take the end part from here, and I'll collate them when they're all on my computer together. But the thing that we don't remember, that most people when they talk about BitTorrent don't remember, is that I'm not at the center of this cloud of computers that are gathering to create a file. Every other computer that's sharing the file is in its own cloud with a whole bunch of other computers. Now, there's a word that's starting to be adopted for this. It's called a swarm. What it means is that as the computers gather together to share information, the more computers that gather together, the more efficiently the information is being shared among them. In other words, popularity is a virtue. Now this is different from what we've been used to for a dec from a decade of netcasting. If you were netcasting something in 1995 and it got popular, your server would crash. Or you'd simply flood out all of your data lines. With BitTorrent, it's exactly the reverse. The more popular something is, the easier it is to get to it. Now, what you might think is that the Sci-Fi Channel saw a drop in ratings because they had so many geek fans who downloaded the episode and saw it three months before it aired in America. Battlestar Galactica is the most popular series that's ever aired on the Sci-Fi Channel. Why? Here's what I think. A few people downloaded that first episode and went, wow, this is amazing science fiction. And they told their friends, and they told their friends, and they told their friends, and all of a sudden you have two to three million people, which on a cable channel in America is incredible ratings. That's like South Park ratings. 
watching a television program. Why? Because a few people, the core fans, managed to get the content, managed to love the content, and managed to spread the word about the content. Now, just two months ago, we saw something very similar happen. The BBC has been preparing a new version of Doctor Who, the first version in 15 years. They sent a copy of it over to the CBC, their Canadian production partner, and it leaked. No one knows how, no one knows why. Someone got fired, we've heard that much. But somehow, somewhere in the CBC production chain, it ended up on the internet. People started downloading it madly. People went, ah, it's not so bad. I think I actually might watch it. I think I'll tell my friends I might watch it. Doctor Who's been getting a 35 share in his series on BBC. So it's probably some of the highest ratings Doctor Who has ever seen. So it seems as though this act of piracy has really only been fanning the flames of interest. Now, we have to recognize that audiences are technically savvy and they're growing more savvy. Young audiences are very savvy. They get what they want. And the thing that we've taught them from 50 years of television, from 10 years of the web, is that they want it now. That's what we've actually taught them by having a box that you turn on and sit down and enjoy. We've taught them that on-demand entertainment is an immediate reality, that it is the logic, it is the narrative of the box itself, separate from any programming. But of course, people are very concerned about piracy. So what we're doing now is we're sending a message that's at variance with the, lo the logic that we've given them over 50 years. We're telling them, no, you can't have this now. It's not yours. It's mine. And so audiences are understandably confused because really what they're doing in this act of piracy is they're reacting naturally to their own enjoyment and pleasure of the experience of the program. But the programmers are saying, but no, you can't do this. We own this. You can't see it until we tell you and unless we tell you. And this is, in a sense, the core of the problem is that there's a disconnect between the audience and the producer. And of course, this is natural because piracy has presented us with a basic economic problem. How do you make money off of something that viewers are getting for free? How do you make money if you've lost control of the distribution channel? Because the way it worked before is there's a producer, there's a distributor, there's a broadcaster, there's an advertiser. Money flows from the advertiser back up through that chain, and if you're lucky, some of it ends up with the producer. And that's kept television production going for 50 years. But of course now, we've sort of broken that chain because the advertiser who's looking for viewers to see their ads doesn't have an audience if the audience has just gone and grabbed the program directly. So the economic value chain has fallen apart in the face of piracy. Now, you hear people say, oh, well, we're going to go to some model like iTunes. People will buy their shows for 50 cents. Let me tell you something. People expect television to be free. And in the UK, particularly because they pay whatever, 125 pounds a year for free television, they really expect it to be free. Now, people pay for movies when they choose to pay for movies. Well, people will say, well, people pay for ca cable. They pay for satellite. They aren't paying for the programs. You know what they're paying for there? They're paying for choice. That's the difference. And when you have broadband, you have infinite choice. So how do cable and how does satellite compete with that? So 